morning everyone. It is 11.30 and we are starting our webinar. Uh, welcome everyone. We are very excited to have you all here today. And um, my name is Katrina Stoops and I work as the e-learning faculty development coordinator here at CityU. And today our topic is gamification drivers that enhance learning. Uh, during this session, you will learn how to apply the eight core drivers to enhance student motivation, and you will also discuss how to integrate gamification into the instructional pedagogy. Uh, this workshop will be interactive, as all our workshops are, and you will have um, plenty of opportunities to discuss and share your ideas. And also, we will be playing a game at the end of the session. So, uh, let's go over some house rules for this webinar. To participate in our discussions, you can use our chat and type your comments and questions there. Um, but if you want to talk, which we actually highly encourage, you can use your microphone. Um, when you're not talking, please keep your mics muted so that we don't, uh, we're not getting uh, any background noise. If you do not have a microphone, you can uh, call in the session by clicking on the icon that looks like a menu up at the top and then select use your phone for audio and then you will be able to uh, participate and speak and interact with the presenter and other participants. If you have any technical issues during this uh, workshop, uh, please let us know via chat and we'll help um, troubleshoot. And now I would like to introduce our presenter, Craig Price. Uh, Greg is the Associate Dean for the School of Applied Leadership. He is also Associate Professor instructing courses in leadership and business. In private industry, uh, Greg served as Director for a training organization in Tokyo, Japan. And he is presently publishing Vice President for a regional publishing company. He earned his bachelor's in economics from the University of Washington and his uh, MBA from the University of Phoenix. Greg is uh, presently a doctoral candidate earning a Doctor of Education degree with an emphasis in organizational leadership at the uh, City University of, of Seattle. And without further ado, uh, Greg, please take it away. Well, thank you very much, Katrina. I appreciate that very much. And uh, what a warm welcome that was. Going to um, present to you today uh, a framework. It's called the Octolysis Framework. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interactive. Uh, if you have headphones and a way to uh, talk, that'll be great. It'll be especially great uh, at the very end of our session when we get into our game, the actual game that we're going to play. <clears throat> so um, if you're doing other activities during this, uh, most of the answers to this particular game are going to be within the PowerPoint uh, presentation that you're going to see. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to um, pay attention instead of doing other work while, while you are listening listening to this. Anyway, I am really excited to have you. Um, today we're going to be looking at the uh, behavioral aspects that apply to gamification. And basically what we want to do is we want to engage our students to have fun, to learn in, in the courses that they take. And uh, right now I'm sure many of you are um, doing just that with um, you know aspects of your courses, whether it's through course design or whether it's through uh, your own instruction that you're doing in the courses. So a uh, little bit uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at um, game design and um, look at the eight core drives. We're going to be looking at right brain and left brain uh, thinking. It would be uh, right brain is the intrinsic and left brain is more the extrinsic. A uh, little bit about white hat and black hat behavioral characteristics, and then we'll go into um, into Jeopardy, the game itself. So, uh, and by the way, just when we get to that game part, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a transition, so prepare for it. Uh, it's uh, I'm going to uh, re you know move away from this particular presentation and go onto my uh, own screen, so there'll be a little bit of a uh, movement on your screen at that particular point. 
Okay, so good design versus poor design. I'm not going to go into this real deep because I know that the e-learning team is uh, very um, effective in this. And uh, basically what I want to communicate is um, there's, there's good design and there's bad design. Uh, the bad design is where you think you have to include all of the bells and whistles in the course, and that is just not true. Uh, sometimes you have a tendency to think that you want to do that, but really the key is to make the user feel engaged in, in the activities that you actually have them doing. And by doing that, uh, you want to work within the, um, the eight core drives of Octolysis. And these ideas, they really move people, they move students through uh, the process in a very motivating way. So there are techniques that we can apply. A lot, like I say, a lot of them you're probably doing, you just don't recognize it. Uh, and, and if you are able to recognize what it is you're doing, in the course uh, design and the course instruction, I think you'll be able to enhance those ideas even further. So let's move into the, um, what the framework actually looks like. And what you'll see are these uh, eight drivers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take each of the eight drivers individually and talk a little bit about them. So uh, what we see is uh, at the top, you've got the meaning, uh, you've got at the very bottom the avoidance and uh, those in between. So we'll go into the first one, which is epic meaning and calling. And um, this is really a behavior, a, a core behavior for, for individuals. And think of it, it, this does not have to apply just for students, but this is kind of the direction that I'm taking this. So, um, you know this presentation so when you think about these um, these different ideas that you have these um, th the ideas of your calling what is it that uh, holds true meaning for you and are they believable to you so if you uh, if you sort that out through the uh, through the student they really have certain ways about them. Um, some of the interactions would be, you know, maybe they contribute to Wikipedia. You know, this is something that uh, is a higher calling for them. They like to go out and they like to do this. Maybe it's um, affinity towards Apple products. You know, they, you've, you've seen those people around. Now, in terms of um, applying this particular idea, think of what you do. Think of why you do what you do. Think of your career and the meaning that actually has to you. Now, think of your students and uh, think of the um, the meaning that that they're you know that they're in your program. Now, why are they in your program? Well, the program has a lot of meaning to them, and this is the idea behind epic meaning and calling. Core driver number one. When we go into core driver number two, uh, I would say that this is probably the easiest driver to incorporate into your courses. And uh, this is where students will feel a progression uh, and they'll gain a, an enthusiasm towards learning. Uh, they have this feeling of growth. They are learning a new skill. And so what you don't want to have happen in the course is you don't want students to feel Dumb. This is about feeling, right? So you want to make sure that they're really um, moving ahead, feeling successful within their uh, within their courses. And how to do that? You really um, there's a lot of ways of being able to uh, to make this work. Guide your users forward. Guide your students forward. This can be through video, um, through different mechanisms that you would put into your course shell on showing them how to get them to where they want to go, even tell them what they're to expect. And this is where the program learning outcomes come into play. Uh, the city youth learning goals come into play. If they understand what it is that they're trying to accomplish, they feel like they're, try they're getting there. So some of the uh, applications that you can uh, utilize in this is um, make sure that the students know the class, you know, what is being taught in the classroom. And as I mentioned, you know, step-by-step -step tutorials on onboarding in the program, uh, discuss course descriptions, uh, have them understand the, uh, the CULGs, the PLOs, even the, C the course learning outcomes for the, uh, the assessment that is um, Going, what they're going through right now in their 
in the, in the course. And you can even do this through a voice over PowerPoint. You can do it through a video formatting technology, that kind of thing. So again, this is probably the easiest one to to apply in your course. And a lot of a, a lot of what you're doing, you're probably already doing many of these things. So when we go to the um, driver number three, uh, this is. Um, so this is the one where I believe where the students have a lot of ongoing learning in the course. It's, um, it's where the, we scaffold the ideas of the course. Uh, we support how students move individually through the course. So um, if you look at this at a higher level, you know, the scaffolding of the, um, of the discussion boards that take them into the assessments and those kinds of things. But then if you look at individual students themselves, they each have the way of, of learning that they want to be able to uh, move forward as well. So create these emotional uh, impacts on students. Give your attention to each student individually. Uh, you can set up different goals through interactions. Um, you can plan a variety of strategies that really make the goal fun to achieve. And uh, in terms of application, like I mentioned, you know, you're scaffolding your course. Uh, you build success into the course and you move students through it. Additionally, this uh, empowering idea to where students do something and then they receive this immediate feedback. This is something that we are striving to have all faculty do, and that would be immediate feedback in your courses. This helps the students know where they're going immediately so that they can change what they're doing if they're off track a little bit. So let's go to the next uh, core driver, and that would be ownership and possession, core driver number four. This is, um, depending on the program that you instruct in, uh, you could support your students through this driver by encouraging them to, for example, keep artifacts. Um, this, is the, this is a motivational feature where students really enjoy collecting things, things that are of personal meaning, things where they've invested time to where they mean something to them. So uh, if that's uh, the artifacts that you're doing in the courses, then you know, encourage them to, to keep them. So uh, one of the ideas, I don't know if you remember this game, but uh, when my boys were growing up, uh, they, they had this uh, Tamagotchi thing where they had to care for a virtual chicken. So you had to feed it and water it and give it sleep and all these kinds of things. It's, it's an interaction, it's an ownership in, in the game world. So anyway, find um, things that you can actually have students collect as they move through the courses, even the program. So the better that you have that designed into your program, the more impact this is going to have on the student. Okay, let's go to core drive number five, and this is where social influence and relatedness occur. And I like to think of this core driver as really um, where the students are engaged in the discussion boards. And in the discussion boards, as you know, students really engage in how they um, work with uh, other students. But this is also a really impactful way where faculty can get involved. So be sure that um, the faculty engage in a very significant manner within the discussion boards. And I think you're going to find that the, the social influence is going to come alive for the student with the faculty. In terms of um, application, I think the one that I just mentioned was probably the biggest kind of application, and this is um, where you individually work with students. Now, there's also the fact where you need to collectively work with all students. And so, you know, finding uh, the right bridge between both of those is going to um, be key for how you really develop this, uh, this core drive. Moving on to core drive number six. Now, to be honest with you, this one I haven't found a really good way to include in course shells, and there's a really good reason for that. So if we identify 
core drive number six is scarcity and impatience. Um, you know, I don't think we really want to um, provide a scarcity sort of arrangement, or we don't want to have students feel impatient. On the other hand, there is a place for this when we look at enrollments and how to bring students forward and for to get them to make a decision within trying to find a way uh, themselves to take a program here at City University. So uh, one of the ideas is to uh, it, well, let's say it this way, scarcity and, patient, and impatience um, in the selling aspect of your program is really like, well, the course is going to, uh, the quarter is going to start here in about two weeks, so you have to make up your mind. Of course, that doesn't necessarily work in the course itself. So, uh, so that's where this um, particular motivator works best in the selling world. The next core drive is number seven, and this is unpredictability and curiosity. And the ideas here are aligned with um, uncertainty and chance. And again, you know, this is probably not the best way, uh, our best uh, core drive to include in your course because, you know, you don't want uncertainty per se in your in your course. Uh, you don't want to necessarily provide chance in your course. Uh, you want to bring students forward to, to help them with success. So um, we, we coined this as kind of a black hat type of um, scenario. And you know, just as the, as the name sounds, black hat doesn't sound like a very wonderful thing. But uh, uh, we'll talk about white hat, black hat here in a little bit. The uh, the application of this really in gamification is uh, where you include certain activities in the course, you know, maybe something unpredictable known as like an Easter egg. Um, it's where users need to jump through it. And some of you may have found a very successful way to, to do this, but, uh, and if you have, I'd be very curious to know how you, you apply it. But um, you might find ways of helping students in the onboarding part of this process uh, to where you incorporate core drive number two, maybe some of number five into this whole idea. So, um, and, and that actually brings up a really good point. Uh, integrating different core drives because we don't just want to have a single motiv motivator for students, but you can actually, you know, utilize different motivators to kind of get to where you want to go with things. And, and maybe that's how we're going to work number seven into where we're headed with our courses here. Okay, core drive number eight. This is, uh, <laughs> this is really about staying alive. Uh, and that's key. And when I think about staying alive in a, in, a, in a course, it's really, you know, keeping students in the program. So what can we do to make sure that students do not fear loss, they, they don't um, do something that's kind of undesirable? Uh, you know, we need to find these things out and fix these things right away. So um, the application, you know, make the user feel the program is right for them. And if you find problems, make sure that we're dealing with this quickly. Okay, those are the eight core drives. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the eight core drive framework and kind of build it around different ideas here, like left brain, right brain. And I'll talk a little bit about, about the logical versus the emotional brain. So. You already, many of you already have a very strong understanding of this, but the right brain is more of the emotional side. And this is where, you know, things are very experiential oriented. Uh, we focus on the process. It's where, you know, we're creative and we're social and we're curious. It is also where the intrinsic motivation lies. And intrinsic motivation is, the, is a very powerful uh, motivator for students within our programs and those are the ones that we want to work on the most. Left brain, the not, you know, the logical side, uh, which is not so great for learning, but it's more goals oriented, results oriented, uh, those kinds of things. The intrinsic motivators are where we're trying to reach a goal, we're trying to reach a reward, we're trying to reach a purpose, and uh, it may not be so interesting or appealing, it's just, it's what we have to do. So if we can 
apply more right brain emotional responses within our course. And this is where, again, where faculty has a huge um, uh, emotional uh, attainment here to achieve with each of the students in the program. I think that we can be very successful incorporating right brain activities. So uh, in terms of the application, right brain, we use it extensively within the instruction to support learners and bring them along. And in left brain, it's, you know, it's more of a sales, again, more of a sales technique. It's not so good used in the classroom. And if you look at how the right brain and left brain, you know, what drivers are really aligned with them, think of them as empower, you know, the right brain empowerment, social influence, and even though unpredictability is in there, we're gonna, we're gonna put that in there. But the left brain is, um, is where we're looking at the accomplishment, the ownership, and the scarcity. Now, when we look at white hat and black hat, this is um, really dividing it on, a hor on the framework on a horizontal type of level. White hat is where you have a feeling of being in control. There's little feeling of urgency. Uh, this is where you're guiding people to get them to do things that you really want them to do, which leads to a successful uh, endeavor for the, for the student. And uh, doing things, it's really utilizing engagement, having quick feedback, um, doing grading in a quick manner. Uh, those are things that lead students forward. White hat is very useful in the classroom. Black hat, on the other hand, is where students may have a feeling of not being in control. Uh, you know, think of advertising. It's just where you are watching TV or listening to the radio and they say, you know, in the next uh, 30 minutes, let's say a TV commercial, next 30 minutes you get this, uh, this whatever it is they're selling for this amount, it's 60% um, off if you call in the next 30 minutes. Those are pressure tactics and they don't necessarily work in the classroom. So looking at the discovery and the onboarding process, the discovery and onboarding process it occurs primarily at the beginning of a program and it's also the beginning of each class. This is where we want to uh, bring students along in a very effective manner. And we have to balance what we do uh, with, you know, too much information, but we also have to make sure that students have the information so that they know where we're headed. Now, the e-learning department is working very hard at really building some very strong uh, tools for both faculty and for, for students to become uh, good well, I should say it this way, for faculty to become very good at bringing the discovery and the onboarding process forward uh, in the program as well as in each of the courses along the program. Looking at each of these, um, in the discovery phase, we want to uh, ask the question, why do people want to sign up for my program? Um, you know, chances are they'll utilize uh, core drive number seven, the unpredictability and curiosity. But we'll also um, incorporate core drive number two, the development and, uh, and accomplishment. Notice how they are kind of a polar opposite on, on, our, um, on our framework. Now, number seven works well for both enrollment and for faculty, but in different ways. So, for example, in enrollments, we want to utilize the black hat strategy, the sales tactics. For faculty, we want to utilize the white hat strategy by telling students that this is the best class for them to take, um, to buy into the, uh, the city youth learning goals, the program learning outcomes, and the course learning outcomes. For the onboarding process, uh, what we want to look at here is uh, core drive number two, development and accomplishment. This is where we teach the rules and the tools of Blackboard. We want students to be successful. It brings them forward. It makes them not feel dumb. We want students to feel smart. We want them to, we want to empower them. We want to make them feel that they can uh, do these things that we're asking them to do. And those are very, very um, important and useful skills to have. 
Okay, so I think we are going to start into our uh, Jeopardy game, and I'm going to share my application on screen so that we can uh, play this game. So while I do this, I'm going to make sure that I pick up on the right screen here. In just a moment. Okay, here we go. And the way that this is going to work is I'm going to um, uh, have one of you, one of the uh, participants in the audience, uh, to talk to uh, to say which one you'd like to um, go with. Anything goes. Our uh, core drivers, or motivation, or design, or application. And if you have the microphone, you are certainly welcome to turn it on and say anything goes for a hundred or something like that. If you have, if you're going to type this in, you can go ahead and type it in, and um, we'll go that route as well. So, Greg, we have motivation for hundred from Daniel. Motivation for a hundred. All right. A motivation considered to be creative, emotional, even experiential, where enjoying the task is motivating, even at the expense of how much one is paid to do it. And if you could answer in a form of a question. Helen says, what is intrinsic? That is correct. Well done. Nice work. Congratulations, what is intrinsic motivation? Okay, next uh, opportunity. Uh, Ellen says motivation for 200. <laughs> Ellen's gonna like this motivation when I think she's on it. A motivation considered to be logically oriented where the motivation to do the task is not necessarily interesting or appealing. And Joel was in very quickly with a response. What is an extrinsic? What is extrinsic motivation? Very good, Joel. Nice work. All right, Joel, you might want to come up on and play the game. And Joel says, anything goes for 100. Anything goes for 100. All right, so uh, blank years old is the average age of a person who plays video games. And Daniel says, seven. What is age seven? I'm sorry, Daniel, but actually, what is 35 years old? Can you believe that? And that is video games. So keep that in mind as we um, develop our courses. We got a wow from that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joel, why don't you go ahead and uh, give us a number, seeing you're still up on, on your winning streak there. Uh, thank you, Alex. I'd like anything goes for 200, please. Here we go. Anything goes for 200. Ah, the blank percent is the number of video gamers who are women. And Joel says 40, although it is not in the form of a question. There we go. What is 40? <laughs> Very close, Joel, but what is 47 percent? Very close. Anybody else would like to play? All right, well, tell you what, let's go with um, core driver one for 100. And I'll be looking for an answer from, uh, from all of you. Doing something greater than oneself, such as contributing to Wikipedia. Which core driver is that? And from Joel, we have, what is epic meaning? Very strong calling there, Joel. So uh, what is core driver number one, epic meaning and calling? Well done.
have a design for 500 from Joel. Wow, going to go right down to the bottom there. Design for 500. Instructors gain access to course shells that are complete. Engaging students in different ways helps them learn through multiple pathways. Beep, beep. What is using Blackboard tools such as Collaborate, YouTube, and VoiceOver PowerPoints? There you go. Anybody else? Let's. We have another motivation for 300. From motivation Ellen. for 300, Ellen. This is half. This half of the brain is where the emotional, experiential, and creative aspects of behavior reside. And from Ellen, what is the right? Nice work. What is right brain? Yes, Ellen, you are rocking it. So go ahead, Ellen. Choose another one. Okay, I tell you what, you know, uh, the this idea of the game, I wanted to just have you experience it. There are a number of different um, there is no double jeopardy in here, by the way, but <laughs> I did want to um, have you experience that game and have a little fun with it. Uh, I'm going to bring us back into the um, into the, sh the, the shell. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, in other words. And let's see. See if I get this right. Oh, actually, can you see what's on my screen now? I have a curiosity on that question. It's um, it says octolysis yeah. gamification. Okay, I wanted to bring this up uh, because this is actually kind of a fun little tool that you could um, go to. It's the U the yukaicho.com octolysis uh, forward slash octolysis dash tool forward slash and what this is is you can utilize this for you know your program even a course or even an assessment to see how you think it is aligning up to the different uh, uh, core drivers so for example if you believe that in your course that you are developing some strong development and accomplishment uh, goals, you can bring your, um, uh, the little um, module or the little toolbar over and you can see that it jumps out a little bit into the accomplishment area. And so you, if you think that you have very strong, you can push it all the way out to 10. Now if you actually are very good in the empowerment, creativity, and feedback world as well in your course, you can push that one out. If you believe that there is very little curiosity and unpredictability in your course, you could um, bring this down very, very low. And you can do that with all of the eight core drives so you can um, uh, visualize what this looks like. Uh, for your course, for your program. And it's kind of fun to uh, to do that because then you can start to understand and see what different core drives are doing within your course, which ones you utilize, and maybe, um, you know, if you do that through your entire program with all your courses, you might find that you're spending too much time or uh, too much space energy into a certain uh, driver and you might want to apply some other kinds of motivational drivers to pick up on students that are that may you know lean more towards that way in their in their motivation so it's something to uh, keep in mind hi greg i this is aaron i pulled up the um, slides from your presentation um, perhaps we can share that url with the, the participants um, either in the chat or following this presentation. But we have also yeah. have the, present, the original pre presentation pulled back up. Very good. OK. So let me go into the chat. And I'm going to post, paste that in there. And uh, there you go. So there you have it. Um, maybe anybody has any questions about today? This is you, Katrina. Um, 
can you tell us um, how you created this uh, game? So you were using PowerPoint um, template, right, to create this game. Did, did you Are find you it talking about the Jeopardy game? Yes. Mm -hmm. So how did I create it? Well, let's see. I had some help. And uh, there was a uh, Whitney actually emailed to me this template, and the template is uh, is already put together. Uh, the links are already lined up in there. You just had to kind of make sure that um, what your links are doing is where you're driving participants. So that was the key here. Thank you, Greg. I just wanted to um, just make sure that it's a template, that it's not something that you have to like do from scratch. So there are templates online for this kind of games. This one uh, came from Whitney. So where she got it, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, probably online. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Joel. Uh, Great presentation. I am curious about the uh, curiosity driver. <laughs> um, an example of an Easter egg I was thinking about would be something that pops up during a discussion. Um, I, I'm just trying to see what, because it's it's a um, intriguing idea to add an Easter egg in there. Um, what are some examples, and maybe the wisdom of the crowd could uh, chime in, you know, of, of adding, adding some sort of hidden surprise in the course. I mean, uh, that would be f You know, I would really enjoy that one as well. The, uh, the You're talking about which core driver was that? Was that number six? Number, number seven, I think, the unpredictability, curiosity one. Uh, that and one. in that was yeah. the mention of an Easter egg. And in gaming, Easter eggs are these hidden things that you don't notice until you do something. Uh, and then all of a sudden, everyone starts talking about it. Um, I'm just trying to think of what are ways that we can incorporate that in our courses, or what's an example, if anyone well, has. If, yeah, if anybody has any great ideas on that, that would um, certainly please add those um, to our discussion here. Um, I could see a couple opportunities. Um, I know, I think Sal has actually started to experiment with the badging in Blackboard. Um, perhaps in some of the continuing education and training courses that you're offering. Um, but that's something that the student would, it, it doesn't necessarily uh, impact their, their grade in any way, but it's kind of um, an extra thing that they can get, that they, you know, achieve, that they can collect, you know, and if they're kind of embedded in different places in the course, that could be a motivating factor for some students. It's not going to be motivating for all of them. Um, True. I kind of think of um, extra credit opportunities as other kinds of Easter eggs for students. Again, it's, you know, not necessarily going to impact students who decide not to participate, but um, could be motivating for other students. And perhaps it's something where they contribute a little bit more to the course or they take a leading role within a course um, to give them additional opportunities to develop and then also um, potentially improve their grade. Very good suggestions. Thank you, Aaron. Any other questions? Well then, e Katrina, maybe I will give this back to you. Thank you. And I have just a couple of very um, quick slides, uh, I mean announcements, just a couple of slides. And Craig, thank you so much for a really interesting presentation. This is the first time I um, kind of, you know, think about gamification not in terms of games, because that's what I thought gamification is, just, you know, add a bunch of games and that's it. Uh, but in terms of creating motivating environment in your classes. So I definitely learned a lot. And as I mentioned in the beginning, we are recording this webinar. 
uh, we will be posting the recording on our faculty development blog. Erin Whitney, if you could uh, post the link to the blog, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. And my uh, two announcements. Uh, so we have two more wonderful uh, web workshops planned for this quarter. So the next one will be in um, at the end of October and then um, in the beginning of uh, November. And the topic is accessibility. And the presenter Presley Rankin will talk about uh, strategies for creating accessible content that you could put online or if you teach a face-to-face -face or mixed mode courses you can still have uh, handouts and say videos and um, so he'll be talking about the strategies for creating accessible content um, and the, our last uh, web workshop for this quarter will, um, will be offered at the end of November and the beginning of uh, December. We usually offer two sessions for each topic. And the topic for that one will be the, fa the news of fake news. And our wonderful librarians, um, Jennifer Bodley and Elizabeth Sinclair, We'll talk about uh, information literacy and how the strategies to help students uh, learn how to evaluate sources. So we have limited seats for each uh, web workshop. If you're interested in participating, please um, register today.